it's hectic. I've been shot seven times. I've been shot six times by rolling 60s. Six times at once. One time I was robbing a man, was shot. The war was taking a toll. Timothy McGee was evil, egotistical, sociopathic, no remorse, totally callous, and extremely cruel. He was the leader of the Tunerville gang in Atwater Village, a community. In the 80s and 90s, Johnson was a notorious leader of the 89 Family Bloods Gang. Police have linked him to 20 murders and called him the most cold-blooded killer in the city. Dive into the tales of six notorious figures from the infamous Crips and Bloods of California. These individuals have significantly impacted Los Angeles streets, embodying the intricate web of gang rivalry, violence, and societal implications tied to such affiliations. Cleman Big Evil Johnson, from the family Swan Bloods, epitomized the ruthless nature of gang leadership, leaving a trail of violence and fear. Monster Cody presents a narrative of redemption, transitioning from a feared gang member to an activist and author, demonstrating the potential for change within even the most hardened individuals. Colton Simpson, Taekwon Cox, aka Lil Fee, stories of life-altering consequences stemming from their gang involvement, from extensive incarcerations to their roles in notorious crimes. Timothy Joseph McGee and Keita Rock, associated with the Tunerville Reef for 13 and the Rollin 60s neighborhood Crips respectively, showcase the varied trajectories of gang members, from criminal enterprises to ventures in the music industry, all while navigating the personal and legal challenges of gang life. Cleman Big Evil Johnson, a notorious figure deeply embedded in the violent landscape of Los Angeles gang culture, was a prominent leader in the 89 Family Bloods, a faction of the larger Family Swan Bloods gang. His reign of terror, spanning from 1990 to 1994, culminated in his conviction for the murder of 12 individuals, primarily rival gang members and witnesses, establishing him as one of the city's most feared gang leaders. Big Evil's criminal activities were not confined to gang rivalry violence, but extended to witness intimidation and a blatant disregard for human life, as evidenced by the numerous murders attributed to him and his gang. His influence within the gang and the broader community was significant, with law enforcement officials and the FBI acknowledging his role in fueling gang violence in South Los Angeles. The family Swan Bloods, with which Big Evil was associated, are a predominantly African-American gang located on the east side of South Los Angeles, stretching from Manchester to 92nd Street between Avalon and Central Avenues. This gang is closely allied with the Mad Swan Bloods, indicating a complex network of alliances and rivalries within the gang ecosystem of Los Angeles. Big Evil's younger brother, Timothy Sinister Johnson, also had ties to the family Swan Bloods, further highlighting the familial connections that often underpin gang affiliations. Sinister's life and tragic death underscore the perilous nature of gang involvement, with his murder in 2007 following a party in Watts, Los Angeles, serving as a grim reminder of the ongoing cycle of violence that plagues gang-affiliated individuals and their communities. The impact of Big Evil and the family Swan Bloods on the fabric of South Los Angeles cannot be understated. The legacy of Big Evil's reign of terror remains a stark illustration of the challenges faced by communities grappling with the realities of gang violence and its far-reaching consequences. I remember this this day in particular. Uh, you know, I called a meeting. I had all the little shooters from my neighborhood up in the meeting, hollering at them about, man, this is what we got going on. We've been meeting with these cats from all these different neighborhoods. We could have had this big ceasefire, and we're going to... Y'all niggas lay your weapons down for a little while and see what happens. As soon as I had everybody cooperation, man, the bullets start ripping through the oh, stove. Key to Rock, whose real name is Keith Thomas Parker, is known both for his involvement with the Rolling 60s neighborhood Crips and his career in the music industry. Affiliated with the notorious South Los Angeles-based gang, 
He made a name for himself on the streets before entering the music scene. Keita Rock was signed to Death Row Records, where he released his debut and only album, Let's Get It Kraken in 2002. The album featured collaborations with artists such as Corrupt, CJ Mack, and Swoop G, and Keita was also part of the compilation album 2 Gangsta for TV released by Death Row Records. In addition to his music career, Keita Rock has a notable street reputation and was involved in a significant legal case in 2005. He was accused of robbing dealer of a substantial amount of and faced charges of murder, which was reduced to second-degree murder, attempted armed robbery, and aggravated assault. He was sentenced by the Arizona Supreme Court to serve a total of 24 years in prison, though he has proclaimed his innocence. Keita Rock's life and activities highlight the complex interplay between street credibility, music career, and legal challenges. His story is a reflection of the intricate dynamics within gang affiliations and the music industry, especially within the context of Los Angeles gang culture and the hip-hop scene. Los Angeles police say the mother, sister, and two nephews of former National Football League star Kermit Alexander were shot dead in their home today. Witnesses said that two gunmen walked in the family bungalow and opened fire. They didn't say anything, said a 13-year-old boy who escaped by hiding in a closet. He said they just came in shooting. Alexander was a star halfback at UCLA, then played for San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia in an 11-year professional career. Lelfi born on December 1, 1965, in Los Angeles, California, became widely known for his involvement in a tragic and high-profile crime in 1984. As a member of the Rolling Sixties neighborhood Crips, a gang affiliated with the Crips, Lil Fee was implicated in the murders of several family members of NFL player Kermit Alexander on August 31, 1984. The victims were Ebera Alexander, 59, Dietra Alexander, 25, Damon Borna, 6, and Amoni Garner Alexander, 12, who were killed in what appeared to be a case of mistaken identity during a home invasion. The crime led to Lil Fee's arrest and subsequent trial, where he was found guilty of four counts of first-degree murder and sentenced to death in 1986. The case was particularly shocking due to the brutal nature of the crime and its mistaken target, which added a layer of tragedy to the already horrific act. Actions and their consequences have been discussed in various media and literature, highlighting the impact of gang violence on communities and individuals. Lelfi's life in prison has also been notable, including a violent incident where he stabbed Stanley Tookie Williams, another prominent gang member, in 1988. This event was depicted in the 2004 TV film Redemption, the Stan Tookie Williams story. Additionally, Lel Fee was involved in a near-escape attempt from San Quentin State Prison in 2000 along with two other inmates, which highlighted the ongoing security challenges faced by the facility. Colton Simpson, born around 1966, is a former member of the Rollin 30s Hollum Crips, a notorious street gang based in South Los Angeles. He is serving a significant prison sentence under California's Three Strikes Law, following his involvement in a series of criminal activities. Simpson is the author of Inside the Crips, Life Inside LA's Most Notorious Gang, where he shares detailed accounts of his experiences within the gang, providing insights into the inner workings and lifestyle of gang members. His life took a dramatic turn in 1998 when he was charged with attempted murder, resulting in a 40-year prison sentence. His criminal record also includes a conviction for robbery and attempted murder in 1986. In March 2003, Simpson was arrested in connection with a dual robbery in Temecula, California, after rental documents linked him to the getaway call used in the crime. He was identified as the driver by police officers who had pursued the car. Although his trial was initially set for August 2005, 
it was postponed after his attorney withdrew from the case. In 2007, Simpson was convicted of robbery, burglary, and grand theft, leading to his sentencing under the Three Strikes Law. Colton Simpson, also known as Lil C. Loke, is recognized as one of the most infamous members of the Rollin 30s. Despite turning his life around, he faced a challenging legal battle, ultimately resulting in a life sentence. Simpson's story, as detailed in his book, sheds light on the complexities of gang life, the impact of a challenging home environment, and the harsh realities of the criminal justice system. Timothy McGee was evil, egotistical, sociopathic, no remorse, totally callous, and extremely cruel. He was the leader of the Toonerville Gang in Atwater Village, a community in northeastern Los Angeles. He was a five-star psychopathic killer. He killed for sport. He enjoyed doing it. It was a high for him to go out and kill somebody. According to the coroner, he was shot 26 separate times. Now, that's a whole different level of cold callousness. McGee always felt that he was an aspiring rapper. He was always writing. A lot of them had to do with the killings that he did. He felt like he could keep this from ever being evidence. And that's where he made a mistake. The US Marshals, LAPD, put together a task force dedicated to finding McGee. He was one of our most wanted individuals. The gang members, they had told me, hey, McGee knows you guys are looking for him. And he's gone. Timothy Joseph McGee, also known as Wera, was a notorious figure associated with the Tuna Vilri for 13 gang, based in the Atwater Village neighborhood of Los Angeles, California. His criminal activities have left a significant mark on the gang's history and the broader Los Angeles area. McGee's leadership in the gang during the 1990s saw a transformation in its operations, including rigorous training in calisthenics, target practice, tactics to elude police, and strategies to eliminate rivals. Under his command, Tunavul Reefer 13 expanded its territory and became heavily involved in the drug trade, dealing in substances such as cocaine, methamphetamine, heroin, marijuana, and PCP. McGee's criminal record is extensive and includes a series of violent crimes starting from a young age. His first recorded act of violence occurred at 16 when he assaulted a guard with a firearm. By the mid-1990s, he had risen to become one of the gang's leaders, known for his ruthless approach to gang wars and his involvement in numerous murders and violent offenses. His criminal activities included the murder of rival gang members, assaults, and even the planned ambush of LAPD officers showcasing his disregard for human life and law enforcement. McGee's reign of terror earned him the nickname Monster of Atwater Village, highlighting his brutal and violent nature. Despite his mixed Scottish and Mexican descent, which was atypical for Surino gang members, McGee stood out for his leadership role in the predominantly Chicano Tunerville 13 gang. McGee's capture and subsequent sentencing to death in 2009 marked the end of a violent chapter for the Tunerville Reefer 13. Although the gang continued to operate in northeastern Los Angeles and nearby areas, his life and crime serve as a stark reminder of the impact of gang violence on communities and the challenges faced by law enforcement in combating such deeply entrenched criminal networks. I'm in the army. I'm from the Crips. We're army. And people fail to realize that we are an army. We are an, an armed unit of soldiers young, vibrant, a lot intelligence. We, we, there's, there's, no, it's, there's no doubt in my mind, I'm sure not in anyone else's mind who was involved in this thing, that we're soldiers, I that mean, we are believe. I joined right. the a Trade Gangsters when I was 11 years old. For the first year, I was just a wannabe, doing things to try to tag on to the gang, to get known in this light. 
And I found out early on that it's the most courageous acts of violence, the things that won't no one else do that will get you in. Unfortunately, um, just been getting cut down this war since September 27th, 20, 29th, 79, man. And, um, it's hectic. I've been shot seven times. I've been shot six times by rolling 60s. Six times at once. One time I was robbing a man, was shot. The war's taking a toll. Every criminal act I've committed has been in commission in trying to destroy in some aspect of World of the 60s. Crip organization, and um, my whole life has been spent primarily on that mission. Monster Cody had a deeply impactful life, marked by his early involvement with the 8th Trey Gangster Crips, his subsequent transformation in prison, and his work as an author and activist. His journey from gang member to influential figure is a testament to the complexities of individual change and the power of personal redemption. Born Cody to John Scott, Chaka joined the eight Trey Gangster Crips at a young age, quickly becoming embroiled in the violent gang culture of Los Angeles. His gang activities, including violent confrontations with rival gangs, earned him the nickname Monster a moniker that reflected his fearsome reputation on the streets. His life took a pivotal turn during a stint in prison in the 1980s, where he encountered members of the Republic of New Africa movement. This meeting ignited a transformation in Shocker, leading him to adopt a new name and a new path focused on activism and self-improvement. Scott's autobiography, Monster, the autobiography of an LA gang member published in 1991, played a crucial role in highlighting the realities of gang life and the potential for change. The book detailed his experiences within the gang and his journey towards a new identity as Sanya Kashoka, offering a raw and unflinching look at the challenges he faced and the decisions that led to his transformation. Through his writings, Monster sought to shed light on the socio-economic conditions that fuel gang culture and to inspire those caught in a cycle of violence to seek a different path. Monster's life story is a powerful narrative of redemption, illustrating how individuals can redefine their identities and purposes in the face of adversity. His transition from a notorious gang member to a voice for change underscores the potential for personal growth and the impact one person can have on their community and beyond. His legacy is a reminder of the human capacity for change and the importance of understanding and addressing the root causes of gang involvement. The lives of these six figures offer a glimpse into the complex dynamics of gang culture in California, reflecting themes of violence, loyalty, and the possibility of transformation. Their stories serve as a potent reminder of the enduring impact of gang violence on individuals and communities, highlighting the need for understanding and addressing the root causes of gang affiliation and its widespread consequences.